What's up, y'all? It is officially August, which means the trade deadline is finally over, and we can look at what the Rangers have done since the last like 48 hours were just absolute insanity. So I'm bringing it way back first to June 30th because technically this was the first significant move that the Rangers made prior to the All-Star break and about a month before the trade deadline. They acquired our oldest Chapman for Cole Reagans and Ronnie Cabrera. I uh, know that Reagans had some ups and downs and this and that, and I don't think he was panning out, unfortunately. And Ronnie Cabrera is a 17-year-old outfielder who was in the Dominican League, I believe. So that was their first move. I think that was a pretty solid deal, you know, a guy that unfortunately didn't have a spot in the bullpen and someone that, if he's good in like 10 years, it won't even matter if this trade pays off, you know. If they get a World Series ring, that doesn't matter. So, that was their first trade. I included this one because it was a few days before the trade deadline. So, technically, this counts, I guess. Uh, it was Kevin Pl- Plowecki, who was also on the Rangers last year. I honestly didn't even know that because last year was one of their bad, bad, bad seasons. Um, He was doing decently in AAA for the Nationals and the Padres, 268 with four home runs, you know. I think he's like emergency backup catcher. He's got a 235 batting average, 22 home runs, 137 in 447 games, which is not bad, you know. But he's obviously... Like the super emergency catcher because the Rangers also got a guy that's supposed to start a few times a week and we'll get to him in a second. But the biggest news of probably the entire trade deadline was Texas trading for Max Scherzer. They gave up Luis Angel Acuna, so it was just a one-for-one trade though. And Scherzer opted into 2024. And the Mets are covering like half the contract, so... It ended up being a pretty solid deal. I was iffy about Scherzer or um, Verlander at first, but it it looks like uh, that's going to be a good deal, hopefully. You know, Scherzer, he wanted to win. And I'm not going to get into it really in this video because it's not related to this, but when he has his press conference here, he mentioned that the Mets owner and front office allegedly had mentioned that they're they're not planning to win again until like 2025-2026 so we'll see what happens with that but that was part of the reason that urged him to leave and then one of the Mets guys came back and they're like no we made that up because we wanted him to get off the team so there's a lot of drama with Scherzer getting traded internally on the Mets side as y'all saw they also traded Justin Verlander to the Astros because of course they did they have to respond (laughs) and I believe I saw a quote from Astros owner Jim Crane who said that was the reason they went out and tried to get Verlander was because the Rangers made this deal so that was their biggest trade of the deadline bolstering that rotation because you know Evaldi's kind of iffy obviously DeGrom was out pretty early on in the season Dane Dunning is still all right but I think maybe he's got a lot of pressure on him to to be the guy now uh, John Gray hasn't been the same since the got rid of Sandy Leone. I honestly believe that is the only reason he's bad now. Oh, well, inconsistent, I'll say. And then Andrew Haney just randomly went off last night. Yes, it was the White Sox lineup, but he randomly threw six shutout innings with uh, 11 strikeouts, I think. So, And then they also have Martin Perez, who I think is most likely to get bumped to the bullpen at this point. So anyway, all that to say... This was a trade they needed to make because there was a lot of uncertainty in a rotation that at the beginning of the season looked pretty damn good. So moving on to their next deal, this is actually a quick article from Jason Stark about how Scherzer's numbers are all not good right now. And that's what worried me a lot because yes, he is 39. He is Max freaking Scherzer, you know, multi-time Cy Young winner, World Series champion, all-star, etc., but he's 39. This is pretty comparable, only to an extent, of when they got Nolan Ryan in 1989, and he was like 40. Yes, Nolan Ryan went on to pitch like two or three more no-hitters, but 
That's because he's Nolan freaking Ryan, you know. <laughs> no one is ever going to replicate what he's done. 27 years pitching, insane. But anyway, I digress. I'm getting way off the track using Scherzer here to talk about other stuff. But this is what initially concerned me. So I talk more about that in the Max Scherzer trade video that I did. Y'all can find that on my channel. And this was their next big deal just about a day later. And they got Jordan Montgomery and Chris Stratton in exchange for Thomas Sejaci, Takoa Roby, and John King. Um, and that, that was it. That was all the details of the deal. As y'all know, John King, he's had his moments. He's had his time, I think. But the time was up, unfortunately, for him. And Thomas Sejaci was just recently a big deal more or less he he got pretty good this year um i've heard from different people that uh Tekoa is one of the higher up pitching prospects for the rangers he's only 21 but i think he has one of the highest ceilings in the farm system he's had a lot of injuries though so i assume that's why they were okay with parting ways on that and this was the details uh from the rangers as well their last trade oh yeah they got um this will be important to the next one here international bonus pool money from st louis because they immediately took that and said here you go pittsburgh can we have your catcher please and thank you <laughs> so that was the final trade was adding some catching depth now i didn't like this at first either because of who they're getting but they only gave up not even cash just the international bonus pool money and i'm actually opening this up here because i forgot about the final trade also welcome back Corey seager i forgot about the final trade because it is on here this one spencer howard to the new york yankees for cash considerations um how much cash i don't know but i'll get to that in a second as well so yeah i, I didn't like this at first because hedges is historically not great i mean you know, they need catching depth, so I get it. Uh, I, I totally understand why they did it. Pretty easy deal, just straight up international money. I did see that he's one of the best catchers at framing pitches, which will fit perfectly into what the Rangers do. You know, Jonah Heim is phenomenal at that. I don't know as much about Mitch Garver, but this will fit great into their catching repertoire. You're not getting him for the bat, obviously. We all know that, so... He also ranked high in um, his fielding runs. Fielding runs saved, which I assume is similar to defensive runs saved, uh, which is a common metric that people use to show how amazing Adrian Beltre was, by the way, if you're not familiar with that metric. So fielding runs saved, I think it's similar. And he leads MLB, or he's number two in MLB in that category. So that could be huge for the Rangers because Jonah Heim they don't know how long he's going to be out for I think he's ahead of schedule because looking at Corey Seager here he's back today from the 10-day IL when they didn't know how long he was going to be out either and that brings us to our last trade here it was after the buzzer because it ends at 5 p.m. the Rangers gave the Yankees Spencer Howard for cash so that was the final deal um, and you can see on the bottom here as well, Scherzer, Montgomery, Stratton were all added to the active roster, and Bradford and Yerry Rodriguez were optioned. I don't fully agree with optioning Bradford. I think they could have sent down Anderson uh, because Bradford has shown some signs of brilliance in multiple inning outings. Um, Yerry, I understand why they sent him down. So there you have it, y'all. That is... The full extent of what the Rangers did at the 2023 deadline. I don't think I missed anything. I even included the ones from before the deadline, and I almost missed the Spencer Howard one because it was after the uh, it was after the deadline. Technically, there's about 30 or 45 minutes where trades roll in, even though the quote unquote deadline is over. So, yeah, I would give them like a A. I'd give them an A or an A minus, maybe. I don't think a B because they did get a great Hall of Fame starter and they got another starter and a relief pitcher um, as well as added a necessary catching depth. And if you're counting Chapman, they're definitely at 
an A ranking, in my opinion, which I think you do count Chapman because that was before the trade deadline. So I would say they did a hell of a job. And the only thing I would have wanted them to do more because I think they didn't do this because of Chapman, but get another like high leverage relief guy. I know Scott Barlow went to San Diego. Like It doesn't have to be someone as premium as Chapman was. And I still don't know how they only got him for who they gave up, but that's a different conversation. And then maybe like a a good bat, another good bat. But if Seager is back and he's going to be good for a while, then they probably don't need that. I think they knew that going into the trade deadline, and they just wanted to make sure he would be healthy. So I'd give them an A, this trade deadline. And it's been a long time, y'all, since we've had to pay attention to a trade deadline, most notably... 2015 was Cole Hamels, 2016 was like Jonathan Lucroy and Jeremy Jeffress, I believe, so use that for an immaculate grid answer if you want. (laughs) Rangers and Milwaukee crossover, Jeremy Jeffress. (laughs) Anyway, let me know what you all think, though. I think they did a great job, and hopefully this team has what they need to make a heavy postseason push, because it's going to be a long couple of months here they have a great schedule coming up like it's relatively easy teams so get it done in august see where you end up by september and let's go to october thanks for watching y'all i'll talk to y'all later